With respect for the reading of God's holy word again, Galatians chapter 5, verses 6 through 10, and it reads, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything, but faith working through love. You were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion did not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump of dough. I have confidence in you in the Lord that you will adopt no other view. But the one who is disturbing you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. Our message for this morning, church, is dealing with disturbers. Dealing with disturbers. You have gotten off the ground in your walk for the Lord. You're doing pretty good. You want to pat yourself on the back. You have gotten a string together of going to church. You've learned how to pray. You've learned how to pray with and for others. Things seem to be going pretty well for you. To God be the glory, to you be the benefit. But things are starting to change. Your skirt is hanging, your slip is showing. You were doing so well and all of a sudden you're starting to slip. What's the problem? All right. It didn't look like this a month ago. All right. All right. But as time progresses, you seem to be getting worse and worse uh -huh. in your walk with the Lord. Uh -huh. We need to talk about some things. All right. Let's talk. Sure All right. Good Most time. definitely. Yes, sir. Paul is revisiting his letter to the church of Galatia. And he realized that they were doing good at one point mm -hmm. until they got disturbed. Mm -hmm. come on, come one of things that bothers me to all to be doggone is when I'm focused in on something. All right. I'm handling my business, whatever it may be. Yeah. And as I'm focused in on the goal at hand, all right. on accomplishing that which I set out to accomplish. Yes, sir. Somebody comes and disturbs me. All right. All right. They, 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 they knocks me off my focal point. Yeah. Hmm. I'm not as hmm. focused as I was before. All right. All right. They may have thrown me for a loop, mm. and I can't seem to right. get right my, my, my. no my, my. more. Mm. It's not unusual for the modern day church because. It wasn't unusual for the first century church. All right. All right. Yes. All right. See, we have to understand that as we walk for God, yes. what is most important? Yes. And where we get thrown off track is when we forget what's most important mm. and we lose sight of what God wants us to look at. All right. And we start looking at what somebody else is showing us. All right now. All right. And whenever you take your eyes off of God, yeah. Yeah. anybody remember Peter trying to yeah. walk on the water? Uh -huh. You can actually be accomplishing miracles yeah. while you're looking at the Lord. Uh -huh. But when you take your eyes off of God and you start looking at man and you start looking at situations and circumstances, you begin to sink. You've been disturbed by the storm. And disturbance come in many ways. They're not just storms. They come by way of people. People disturb us too. No matter what disturb you, be it elements or be it people, you need to get your focus back on Lord. Look at the verse here. We need to understand the paradigm between faith Works and love. All right now. If you know what faith is, you know that faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. All right. That means in order to see it, you gotta believe it. Yes. So 
in what we're discussing today, faith is a key component. Yeah. But faith is not work by itself. All right. With in the economy of faith, you also have to have works. Yeah. Because faith without works yeah. is dead. Right. You can't say you got faith in the Lord, right. but yet you look the same as you did yesterday. Right. You have to start doing some things yeah. that line up with the faith right. that you profess in the Lord. Right. Good right. deeds follow along yeah. with your yeah. faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. You can't be loving the Lord and still be mean. All right. All right. You can't love the Lord yeah. and be hateful. Yeah. You can't love the Lord and All seek right. to hurt other people. Yeah. So we got faith and we got works. And yeah. along with faith and works, it has to be bathed in love. Right. Because love is the foundation. Yeah. When I talk about love, I'm not talking about friendship. All right. When I talk about love, I'm not talking about physical intimacy. Right, when I talk right. about love, I talk about agape love. Right, and when I talk right. about agape, I'm talking about self-sacrificing right, love. Yeah. The type of love that God displayed for you and me when he sent down Jesus to die for us. Right. So you have to understand the relationship between faith, works, and love yes, if you're going to hold off the disturbance. All right. All right. If you look at verse 6, right. as Paul talked to the church, he says, for in Christ Jesus, right off the bat, we're talking to believers. We're talking to those that are in Christ Jesus. Those who have accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. We're talking to the church, not unbelievers in the world. So you have to know who you're talking to and understanding what you're saying. He says, for in Christ Jesus, now here's what's important. He says, neither circumcision no uncircumcision circumcision right. means anything. All right. See, the problem All is right. we place value on things right. don't mean nothing before God. Right. He says neither yeah. circumcision yes, or uncircumcision means anything. Right. See, they thought the circumcision meant something. All right. And just like they thought circumcision meant something, they thought to be uncircumcised meant the opposite of being circumcised. All right. See, we place value on the wrong things. All right. See, to be circumcised right. meant that you were special. See, under the law, to be circumcised identified you as a Jew. Uh -huh. The Jew was the one who had a direct relationship with God the Father. Yes, now, he's saying in the New Testament, circumcision means nothing. See, when they were circumcised, it made them feel above everybody else. When they were circumcised, it gave them a spirit of entitlement. When they were circumcised, it gave them a spirit of legality. It made them feel like they were above other people, which is why God had to knock that system down. It made them feel like they were better than other people, that they were more privileged than other people, not too much like people today. There are people who are in the church think that they're better than people who don't know the Lord. And all God did was show you a little mercy and a little grace. Otherwise, you'd still be outside instead of inside. But don't think you're better than nobody else because you got salvation. Because you may mess around and think you got it when you really don't. Because people say you don't act like they're better than nobody else. They act like they're trying to get others to where they are so that we can all give God the glory. See, 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 see they, 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 he says, he says, neither circumcision or uncircumcision means nothing. So stop placing yourself above people because you think you got in a special position with God when God has called you to bring others alongside you. And he says, neither uncircumcision means nothing. See, they thought back in the Old Testament to be uncircumcised, they called you a dog. Yeah. To be uncircumcised, that meant that you wasn't worthy of the grace of God. All right. To be uncircumcised meant that you were on the outside of God's grace, looking in. Yeah. So in the New Testament, he says, don't think that having circumcision makes you all that in the bag of salvation. And don't think that uncircumcised makes you unworthy. We're in a new economy. We're under new rules. We're under the law of mercy and grace. Not the law of physics. Not the law of I look better than you. Not the law of I got better clothes than you. Not the law of I got a better house than you. Not the law of I got more money than you. I am under the law of mercy and grace. And mercy and grace says it ain't about your clothes. It says it ain't about your shoes. It ain't about your house. It ain't about works. It ain't about your feelings. It's about your relationship with Jesus Christ. So he says, he says, neither circumcision or uncircumcision means a thing. Then he tells you what's most important. See, we need to stop looking at the physics and we need to start looking at the spirit. He says what's most important, get this, faith, 
working through love. Right. Now we got the relationship of faith, works, yes. and love. Amen. See, if you got faith, your faith has to be working. Yeah. If you got faith, yes. you're going to help the poor. Yes. If you got faith, you're going to pray for somebody who yes. is going through some That's tough right. spots. Yes. There are families struggling right now in this church. Yes. Struggling not necessarily in one bay, but in another. Yes. Not necessarily struggling educationally, but struggling financially. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily struggling financially, but struggling spiritually. Yes. There are some husbands and some men and some head of households that are struggling with their children and struggling with their wives nowadays. See, when you love the Lord, your faith is going to work in how you pray for others. Yeah. Your faith is going to work in how you lift up others to the Lord. Your yeah. faith is going to work in how you carry yourself in the presence of yeah. all other people. Yeah. Your faith is going to work in not only what you say, but most importantly, in what you do. It's all about how you walk and less about how you talk. It says faith yeah. works yeah. through love. See, don't tell me you love the Lord. Don't tell me you got faith in God, but you can't pray for nobody. Right. Don't tell me you got faith in God and you can't help somebody that's worse off than you. Yeah. Don't tell me you got faith in God, but your faith is vested in what you can do for yourself and nobody else. Yeah. Get this, because faith working in love. See, you have to love in order to exercise faith. My, my, my. And see, God loved us until he gave his only begotten son. Yes. That's love on a level that we will always be chasing. All right. As long as we are chasing it, we'll catch up to it when we get to heaven. All right. But as long as we're chasing it down here, our works will become evident. Right. When you talk about a person, you're going to talk about right. how good yes. they are for the kingdom because of what you see they do down here. All right. If all I can say about you is you talk a good talk, but you don't walk a good walk, right. I ain't said much. Right. Your faith has to work in love. Amen. If you have not love, you got nothing. Right. Because God instituted faith based on love. Yes. He loved us so much, he saw that we were in such a sin-sick situation till he sent down Jesus to take care of our sins. Yes. That's love. Yes. That's love. And that's the kind of love we're chasing. That's the kind of love that empowers our faith. That's the kind of love that makes our faith go to works as opposed to just being dead. Because my faith has to be productive. And if my faith ain't productive, it ain't faith at all. And if it ain't faith, it certainly don't have love attached to it. So you have to have faith working through love. And, 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 and get this as he's talking to the church. He knew that something has happened. If you look at the next verse, he says... You were running well. So he is uh, equating our Christian endeavor. He's equating, he's equating our Christian walk to like running a race. And, and, and he's saying that we were running well. We headed toward the finish line. He's saying that we are in stride. We're passing up obstacles. We're passing up hurdles. And the finish line is within sight. And all of a sudden we start to look. Something happened. He said, you were running well. Yeah. In other words, you were coming to Sunday school. All right. In other words, you were conducting the ministry that God right. called you to conduct. Right. In other words, you were walking the walk in front of other people and not yeah. just talking the yeah. talk. Yeah. In other words, you weren't only just singing praises yeah. in him. You yeah. were living them out. Yeah. You were taking care of your household as a head of house. Yeah. You were loving your children Women were respecting their husbands and husbands loving their wives and yeah. children submitting to the parents and the, 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 the church members giving God glory and ministry and being consistent and studying the word of God to allow the word to permeate, to penetrate down into their heart all the way to their bones and yeah. mouth. He, you, you were running well. Yeah. Yeah. You look like Carl Lewis out there. All right. mm. The men looking like Carl Lewis and the women looking like Flo Jo. And then the very next thing he says is why you were running well. He goes right into it. What happened? What happened? You were running well. He says, who hindered you from obeying the truth? What happened? 
something happened, you started, you, you broke stride, you, you broke form, and instead of running uh, every stride three feet, you started going every foot and a half. Your strides got smaller, yes, and then you started getting out of breath, and you started looking up into the crowds and started yeah. looking at the finish line. Yeah. You started looking behind you to see who was next to you yeah. or who was right upon you yeah. instead of focusing on the finish line. Yeah. What happened? Yes, or better yet, who happened? Who happened? Because he said, who hindered you? Yeah. So he's saying right now that people can hinder you. All right, yeah. You've been studying the word of God. Yes, sir. Walking the walk and talking the talk all and right. teaching the word all and right. living it out. And, right. and now all of a sudden you done right. gone sideways right. because all someone right. has hindered you. All right. All right. You You've been disturbed. Right. Sure you had your flow on you, you'd have been disturbed. Shame on you uh -huh. for letting somebody disturb you. Uh -huh. Sure Shame on you for letting sure your neighbor's sure new car sure disturb you. Yes. Shame on you for yes. letting your co-worker's promotion yes. disturb yes. you. Yes. Shame on you for letting your co-student who got a better grade than you disturb you. Yes. Yes, sir. Stop uh -huh. letting folks this Shame on you for letting that uh -huh. Facebook post disturb you. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. Now you trying to be the Facebook police looking right. worse than the All person right. who posted yes. the bad post. All right. Say it. He yes. says, he says, who hindered you? And get this, he's not saying just hindered you. He's telling you who hindered you from, from stopping you from obeying yes. the truth. Yes. So the way you've been hindered is somebody then talk you into All turning right. your back on the word of yes. God. You no longer want to obey what the word says. You, you see, you, you see, you want to listen to the disturbances you get on CNN. You want to get to the disturbances you get on KTRK or KHOU or, or whatever the call letters of the station may be when you need to be listening to JESUS. All right, all right, all right. They telling you that bad is good when you know that. Bad is bad. All right now. Uh, yeah. You need to stop listening to the disturbances because on the TV and on the radio and on your job, they're going to tell you that what the Lord says is bad is actually good. All right. All right. They tell you that the alternative lifestyle is good when God says, no, that's bad. All right now. You've been disturbed because now you walk around saying that is good. When the Lord says bad, Bad is bad. Say, say, bad is bad, and good is good. Good is not bad, and bad sure ain't good. Who hindered you? Look at, look at it. He, he, he says they hindered you. They, 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 they causing you to turn your back on the truth. And, and, and the Bible says the sum of God's word is truth. So if they hindered you from the truth, they hindered you from the word of God. Get this, the Bible tells me in, in, in 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 that bad association corrupts good character. Right. So if I'm hanging around people that's disturbing me, if I'm hanging around people that cause me to turn my back on the word of God, I'm hanging around bad association. And I need to let that off the hook. Throw that fish back. He ain't going to feed you. He's going to get you sick. Set your drive and let him run as far as he can. Let him get way out in the middle of the ocean and snatch your hook back out of stop. And don't be concerned that you ripped his guts out when you did Bad association corrupts good character. You want your good character corrupted? If you keep on not obeying the truth of God, you'll let the disturbance hinder you. Stop being disturbed by the world. Stop linking it into what the world says is good when you know it's bad. Yes. Look at it. He, he says, what happened to you or, or who happened to you? And, and you can't blame this on Jesus. All right now. It says, this persuasion, see, 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 you've been persuaded. Yes. You don't even realize it. You've been persuaded daily. You don't even understand it, but what you take it in in your ears, what you take it in your eyes, you're being persuaded. The problem is, can you be persuaded? All right. All right. All right. Look at the word right. of God. It, 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 says, it says, this persuasion, this persuasion of disobedience right. to the word of God, you when you preached. once was running well, on, it says, this persuasion did not come from him, capital H, meaning Jesus, didn't come from him who called you. Yes. 
Right. No, it didn't because it came from the disturbance. Yes. Yes. And I had to him. Yes. Jesus called you. Yes. Now they're trying to call you away. Yes, that's right. So you need to stick to your yes. calling from the Lord. Yes. And abandon your calling yes. from right. the disturbance. Yes. Abandon your calling yes. for those who are promising you better than what Jesus can Hold offer. Down. Abandon your calling All from right. the world who's All trying right. to blow you up. Yes. When the Lord says, stay on them. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. See, see, All see, right. see, see, your calling is from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it yes. says this persuasion, this ungodly persuasion, right. didn't come from Jesus. Right. We want to blame the Lord for our problems. God, how could you this? God, how could you that? Yes. God, how did you this? Okay, God said, they had nothing to do with me. Yes. Mm -hmm. You was carried away by your own lust yes. in listening to the disturbers yes. pull you away from my word, yes. make you disobedient. My See, the mind. devil comes to kill, yes. steal, yes. and destroy. Yes. And he uses yes. disturbers yes. called demons, yes. part of his yes. army, yes. to distract you, yes. to pull you away from the Lord yes. into yes. their situation. Yes. Yes. You better know. He said, this persuasion didn't come from him who called you. It came from the world. So you need to understand that Jesus is not to blame. So you need to trust the Lord to help you deal with the disturbance and stop blaming God for what you're going through. And he issues you a warning. He, he issues you a warning. He, he gives an illustration. He says, a little left. Yes, it does. Leaven is the whole lump of dust. You, you, you know, I, some of you, some of you, we ain't been buying pills better all our life. So some some people still make their own dough. Very few. But 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 leaven is likened unto yeast. And and you take leaven and you put it in the dough. And the leaven would work its way through the dough and it would cause the dough to rise. It's like yeast. You put yeast in the dough, it will cause the dough to rise. Uh -huh. And then you take a little of it and keep it off to the side. Yes, and you bake the rest of it. And you keep that leaven dough for the next lump of dough you make to put it in that. And it works its way through that. And this process will happen. It'll rise again and whatnot and so forth. He's saying the disturbers are like yeast. Yeah. You know about them yeast people. Yeah. There are people out yeah. there that will work their way all the way throughout yeah. those spiritual strength in the Lord. Yeah. There are yeast people that will work their way out through your life. Yeah. You, you, you give them an inch, they'll take yeah. them out. Yeah. You start talking to them on the phone, now they're sitting on your couch. Yeah. They're sitting on your couch, now you done gave them the upstairs bedroom. You done gave them the upstairs bedroom, now they can't have the rent. They paying half the rent. Now you rent a room in your house. A little leaven spoils a whole dough. They come in with false doctrine. It's a little bit of you say, I don't listen to that. I'm strong in the Lord. But you let it in your house. And before you long, you, you, you're agreeing to some of the stuff they say. Before long, you're repeating some of the stuff they say. Before long, you're believing some of the stuff they say. A little yeast works its way through the whole lump of dough. You the dough and the yeast of unrighteousness, the, 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 the unrighteousness of leaven you allowed in your house, now you completely disturbed. I'm not talking about just partially disturbed. You're disturbed in your mind. You become insane in the membrane. Because you let it in. And now you're scratching your head trying to understand what happened. What happened? It ain't what happened, it's who happened. You let who happen to you. Now you're disturbed. Can't get right, boss. Turn me up back on the Lord. He, he says, this didn't come from God. This ain't come from the Lord. Stop, put, stop putting this off on the Lord. And, right. and, and I'm going to give you this one. He says, a little leaven leavens the whole lump of dough. You need to be aware of the yeast people because they are trying to cause you to rise to the tune of their beat. But he realized that the people he was talking to only needed a little encouragement. All right. All right. You got to have confidence in the Lord. Yes. Get 
this. She says, I, you, know, I mean, you, need to, you need to look at the words here because, because if you don't look at them right, you, you think the man got power, but when you slow it down, you understand that the power is in God. He, he says, I have confidence in you. Now, 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 if we just stop there, well, we think the man had some power. Right. I got confidence in you. If I tell you I got confidence in you, I'm not just talking about you. See, 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 my confidence in you is vested in your confidence in the Lord. See, there ain't no point me being confident in you and you ain't confident in the Lord. So, 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 so he, he said something to him. And then on the back end, he clarified it real quick. Because he didn't want them to get the big head. See, sometimes you say something to us, and if you don't give the whole story, we walk away with the big head. God said, oh, I'm confident in you. Hey, yeah. Confident in me. And then you come in the Lord. Amen. Oh, okay. All right. In the Lord. Look at it. Look at it. He says, He's, he's talking to him. He's, he's saying, he's saying, he's saying, don't don't blame Jesus for what you're going through. Uh, you happen to you. You let these bad associations because you fail to let your faith work in love. And, but he says, guess what? I have confidence in you, in the Lord. Yeah. As long as you are in the Lord, that's right. I can have confidence right. in you. Right. Because why? Right. Jesus will never leave you, yeah. nor will he ever yeah. forsake you. If you got confidence in the Lord, that means Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. That means you are trusting in God with all your heart. You're leaning not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways. In everything you do, you're giving God the glory. And he's going to direct your path. That's how I can have confidence in you. True Bible, I got confidence in you, in the Lord. And I hope you got confidence in me, in the Lord. As long as we're giving glory to God, everything is going to be all right. Amen. He's coming back. Amen. Just like he said he would. Amen. I want to be ready. Yeah. I've got to be ready. Yeah. For his peace, love, and happiness. Uh -huh. He's coming back. Yeah. He's coming back. Yeah. Because I got confidence in you in the Lord. Don't give up on God. Don't put your confidence in yourself. Yeah. Don't put your confidence in another man. Put your confidence in the Lord. And as long as you trust in God, everything is going to be all right. As long as you trust in God, you don't have to worry about the disturbance. As long as you trust in God, the disturbance can't take you out. As long as you trust in God, they can't knock you off your course. As long as you trust in God, you keep your focused eyes on the cross. As long as you trust in God, you keep your eye on the altar. As long as you trust in God, you're not going to look to your left. As long as you trust in God, you're not going to look to your right. As long as you're trusting in God, you're not going to look down. You're not going to look behind you. But when you trust in God, you constantly look ahead. Paul said, one thing I do, I strive for the open call in Christ Jesus. I don't know when to look behind me. I look in front of me because the windshield is better than the rearview mirror. The windshield guides me where I'm going. If I look too long in the rearview mirror, I'm going to run into a ditch. That's why the rearview mirror is this small and the windshield is that big. The importance is on what's ahead. I can look back every now and then to remind me from which I come from, but I don't want to stay there too long. This is why I got to focus on the windshield of my faith in Jesus Christ. That's what comes from God. That's what I heard from my King of Kings and Lord's Lord. He, 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 he say, you got to trust in God. And as long as you keep your faith in the Lord, I can have faith in you. Because if you are the Lord and I have faith in you, that means I'm really trusting in God, not you. Amen. Everything comes back to our source, which is the Lord. A lot of people were talking about how bad a week they had. Don't, don't stumble. Right. Don't stumble. Don't, don't let the disturbances right. yeah. throw you off. Don't let it throw you off. So what has been a rough week? Hey, you know what? I, right. God brought me through. Yes, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep on running yes. for Jesus. Yes, Lord. I'm going to keep on running for Jesus. Jesus. What are we looking for? Wow. Now, seriously. 
Sometimes we get discouraged because we think that it's going to get better than this. Mm. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's going to get better than this when we go home to be with the Lord. Amen. 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 Yes, it's going to get better. Amen. But if you're looking Amen. for a day-to-day -day right. perfect situation, yeah. no, 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 no. don't you know that you're going to encounter some of the same crap in 2015 that you did in 2014? Yeah. In some ways, it's going to be better yeah. than 2014. In yeah. other ways, it's going to be worse than 2014. Yeah. But life goes home. Yes. Stop looking for that, that one uh, spiritual, physical experience and say, hey, I'm going to keep living. Just say, Lord, today was not much different from yesterday. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to keep on keeping on. Amen. This day is not much different than a week ago. Same job, same problems, same challenges, same tribulations, but I'm going to keep on keeping on. What you looking for? This is the earth. Ain't too much happening down here. Amen. And if it is, it ain't good. Amen. You're looking to give God glory in how you handle yes. what you go through down here. Look forward to trials and tribulations Amen. with a heart of Jesus. You ride the shotgun with me? Yes. I tell you what, Jesus. Here the keys. I'm riding shotgun with you. Yes. Take the keys, Lord. Yeah. All right, cause guess what? I know what's around that curve. Mm -hmm. You know to keep straight ahead and not make that turn. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm not as smart as you, God. You know what? Not only take the keys, here's the title to the car. <laughs> it's your car, Lord. Yeah. <clears throat> Just give me where I need to be. It ain't about how I'm styling on the way. Yeah. It's about me getting to where you want me to go. Yeah. Don't let the disturbers throw you off. You won't know how to deal with disturbers. Keep your eyes on the prize. Yes. And the prize is Jesus Christ. Amen. Most gracious Father in heaven, in the name of